Good afternoon, morning or evening, everybody. Uh, this is Alejandro Alvarez, and I uh, want to welcome you to the Open Office Hour series by Crow. Uh, today's topic is NetSuite Safe Searches. Uh, we're, we're still having people come in, so we will give everybody a few minutes to join the webinar, and then we'll get started with a high-level overview of safe searches and, and to answer your questions. Again, uh, good morning, afternoon, everybody. Uh, it's 1.02 p.m. here in Texas. Uh, we'll give everybody about a minute or two to get started. We have around 10 attendees so far. Uh, we're expecting a couple more, so we'll give everybody a couple minutes and then we'll get started. Thank you. Okay, um, again, welcome to our Open Office Hour series. Uh, today's topic is NetSuite Safe Searches. My name is Alejandro Alvarez. I'm a solution consultant with Crow. You can see my information hopefully on the screen. If you have any follow-up questions after this uh, webinar, please don't hesitate to send me an email and we'll try to respond to it as soon as possible. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, we are going to talk about NetSuite Safe Searches uh, today. Last week, we talked about financial reporting. Uh, so I'll start with a brief overview of Safe Searches, and then we'll get right to the questions that were submitted. We have about 12 questions that were submitted uh, before the session. So we'll get to those and, and answer any additional questions you may post on our Q&A section. Um, so let me drag. Hopefully, you can see my NetSuite um, instance i'm logged in as an administrator <clears throat> um, and just to start with a high level overview of safe searches um, uh, the way as you may all know to create a safe search is you come here to reports in your roles and reports is something that appears in every role if you have the permission to create safe searches you'll have a a link here to new search and when you do that, you'll see a list of all the records or record types that you that can have safe searches created for them. Uh, and, and you always start a safe search from a record type. Um, you click on the record type. I'll, I'll start, actually, I'll do one with, with a customer. Uh, so let me go back to that. And I'll just come up with a customer list so you have it here as customer.
And here you'll see this first uh, screen. It'll give you basically a, a, a quick add, a quick screen to create a customer search. Um, there's a couple of things you can do with safe searches. The first one is you, you can create basic search screens, or you can create what's called a safe search. We'll call, we'll go and create a safe search. Usually when I'm creating safe searches for reporting, for data information, ad hoc data, I'll usually just go straight to create safe search. And you'll give that safe search a name. And it's always best, best, best practice to give it an ID. If not, next we will give it a random ID. Within the safe search, you can define whether it's public or not. So whether everybody can see it or not, um, and then we'll get into permissions in a second, whether you can see it as a Alejandro, uh, we, we can't hear you. Alejandro, can you hear me? Hello, sorry, I, it seems like my audio went out. Can you please confirm if you can hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. Perfect, thank you, Steve. Sorry, everybody, um, it's, it's been apparently a couple minutes, so I'll, I'll start over with a safe search. Uh, this happened last week, I'm not sure, I'll have to check my microphone, but um, <clears throat> thank you for that. The, um, <clears throat> what I was going through here is when you create a safe search, <clears throat> You have the option of make, making it public so everybody can see it, or, or if not, you can restrict permissions. You can set it up as a list view, and a list view is basically what you see here. This is the list. So if you wanna be able to see it here as a drop down, you would create it as a, as a list view. 
um, a dashboard view is you want to be able to see it on your uh, main dashboard. Sublist view if you want to be able to see it under another record as a sublist, and, and and that's a little bit more advanced. Reminders is if you want to see it on your dashboard as a reminder here, and uh, showing menu if you want to be able to see it in the main menu of the safe searches. Once you have defined those those items, you can define your criteria, and criteria is going to be uh, whether um, you want uh, you know uh, to see specific. Uh, filter this list based on specific criteria that you want. So instead of creating a list of all your customers and then um, downloading it and, and, and filtering Excel, you can filter it here and only see the things that you want to see. Um, so I only have the criteria of the United States here, but you can also use expressions. This is a little bit more advanced, but you can use expressions. For example, if you click here, you'll see that additional fields show up. So in this one, I'm going to say, well, show me customers that are in the United States, so I can say I, I add parentheses here, or and I add I can add and or or parameters, or their their country is um, <clears throat> your country. Yes, and you can, I'm gonna list of, a list of all the countries, and I can scroll down to the country that I want, and I'm gonna say the United Kingdom. And then I close the parentheses here. So this search <clears throat> is going to show me, excuse me, it's going to show me all your customers that are for United States and the United Kingdom. Once I define, and the parameters can be, the expressions can be complex. You can have and and or expressions. Uh, you can even use formulas. Uh, we'll show your formula on the results page a little bit later. And then you add your results. So here I'm going to add, you know, the country as a result here. And once you add your results, you can also drag and drop them where you want them in the in the search. So I'm going to put, you know, my results in the as the first as the first country. Um, if you want to rename a label, so for example, here it says name. If I want that to be company name, I can under custom label this column here. I can just change the label that I want to um, and put the label that I want on the result. Um, and you know, you add all your results that you want. You can define how to sort it. So I'm gonna sort it here by name ascending. Uh, and, and then you add your all your fields. You can highlight and I'll get into highlighting later and you can add filters. So within this, if I wanna say, well, I wanna filter this further by country when I'm looking at it, if I had multiple countries there, um, or I want to filter it by date of creation, for example, where did I create this customer? I can add the, the filter here and um, and let it, uh, and then it will show up as a filter. <clears throat> On the audience is where I define, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> On the audience is where I will define who can see the search. So if I didn't make it public, I'm gonna, I, I need to define who can see it. Uh, if I make it public, then anybody can see it. Uh, and then on the roles, you can define the search as preferred searches for any of the roles that you have. I'll get into email a little later. So once I have defined this and I'm gonna make it public, I can do here, you have three options, save and run, save an email or just save. I'm gonna click save and run. And it's gonna show me my search with my all my results. Obviously I can, this safe search, I can export it to CSV, I can export it to Excel, I can export it to PDF, I can email it from, from here. Uh, and these filters are the filters that I've defined. So if I wanna say, well, show me all, all the that I added or that I created this year, then it's gonna filter the search and it's gonna show me that I've created one customer this year. And you can add anything that's in the customer record as a field. Um, so that's a very, very, very quick uh, introduction to safe searches. Um, we'll get into some of the questions now. The first question that we have was, what is the value of using a safe search versus a report? So safe search and reports can accomplish some of the main, the same things. Uh, we talked about reporting last week, but reports are better than safe searches if you need to add subtotals, if you need to add some formatting uh, to, the, to the results, 
and if you want to have simple formulas. Safe searchers are gonna be better to just create ad hoc reports if you wanna have complex formulas, uh, if you want to uh, have a list of information, like I mentioned, a list of customers. So now if I come here, I can refresh this and I'm gonna have a, a list here um, called open office hours. So if I just type here, there, here's my search, and, I, and now you'll see that the results look a little bit different. So if I want it as a list, I need to build it as a search. So depending on what information you want to um, get out of NetSuite, the first decision is always, do I want to report or do I want to save search? In my opinion, safe searches are a lot more flexible and are easier to understand that reporting. But uh, again, it always depends on what you want to build. Um, the second question was, how can, can you review how to add a custom fields into column results? So I'm gonna go back to the same search and I'm gonna edit it. And if I wanna add a custom field, when you come to the, uh, um, to the results column, you're gonna see a list of all the different, um, the, the, the list of all the different fields that are available. One thing with NetSuite is that this list is not always limited only to fields that are in that specific record. So again, you have to know what field you're looking for um, to be able to add it. So it takes a little bit of trial and error, but if a custom field is it's custom, it's gonna say it on the field here. So annual revenue is a custom field. So if I wanna add the annual revenue call field, I would just add it there. Um, the custom, moniker does not show on the, on the label of the column, by the way. Uh, and again, you can add any custom field that you want, industry, for example. So I'll add these two custom fields. You know, I'll, I'll move the industry next to the name here, and then I, I can run it. And when I save and run, now the, the industry field is gonna show up here. And if there's any value, it's gonna obviously show up. If not, you know, I can, it will be empty. Um, a thing here with the safe search uh, is that you can sort by any of the columns. You, you define a predefined sorting criteria. You can sort by any of the fields here by just clicking on the column name. You'll see that there's an arrow here. It'll go up and down based on the criteria. The other thing also with safe searches that you cannot do in reports is that you can add information. So you, you have the option, if you have it turned on, the option of do inline editing which is an option that is, is the y, uh, an account wide option that you can set up. And what that does is you'll see this edit uh, sliding button here. And if you click on edit, uh, it'll, it'll, so a pencil will, sh will appear in the columns that you can edit within the report. So if you're looking at a report and you wanna update the industry of the account, of a specific customer, you instead of going one by one opening the record, you could create a, a, a search that shows you everything that has industry uh, empty, for example, uh, and I'll show you quickly how to do that. And I'll do that with annual revenue empty. So you saw that there was one value with annual revenue. So here I can say, well, show me, uh, I wanna see all, only results where the industry, and they will show me, uh, is any of none. The way that you would, you will see where, it, where it's blank, you will see, uh, you would have to choose any of none. Right? So I, I'll choose any of none, and I'm gonna choose annual revenue. So I just type A-N-N, -N, it'll, it'll take me to the A's, annual revenue, and then here, because it's a value field, it shows me a, a different option. So I'm gonna say, you know, is empty. It's empty. So I don't want zero because zero means that it's an annual revenue zero where it's empty, right? So I can select that. So now we added a couple more criteria and when I run it, you'll see that that first value that had an annual revenue disappears because I, it's not in my criteria anymore. Um, so I'm gonna come in here into Ultima Technology and because it's, it's a, it's a um, inline edit field, I can add the criteria, I can add the industry and I just have to click away from it and now you'll have, and I will have my revenue and I'll put, you know, a million dollars. Um, again, I can do column it here. I'm gonna say this is apparel. So now if I refresh the search, 
those two values will disappear. And notice that I said when both were empty, I could have said when one is empty and the other is not. So, so a little bit more insight into into things that you can do with safe searches. Uh, that is that is pretty uh, pretty nifty for for mass updating. Um, the third question is: um, Is there a way to see all fields or what kind of data is available in the fields as compared to the user interface? Essentially, understanding from the form view and what the safe search is mapped to. So. That's a little bit, uh, I'm gonna mention that already, it's a little bit tricky. Uh, so if I open a, a custom uh, a, a form, first it will depend on a couple of things. How many forms you have available? So if I took a look at this form, um, there's a concept of, of, the, of forms, right? Of, of customized forms. And for the customer record, my account has all these standard forms and my customized forms. So the form is gonna show you what fields are available in the in the actual uh, form, uh, when you go to a save search, the search doesn't distinguish from form to form, so it shows you all the fields that are available. And like I mentioned before, it shows you fields that are available in, in other records and not specifically in that type of, of of customer form in this example. So you really have to know what you're looking for, but you should be able to just by by just defining the field. Uh, the annual revenue or the, the field name, what you are looking for, and just type in that same uh, field in the uh, uh, when you're creating the search and you're creating the search criteria. A couple of tips there are are, are there are that you can uh, the, the, this field annual revenue as we know is a custom field. Um, custom fields if you have administrator rights or you have an administrator as your company, custom fields are created under setup, uh, not setup, sorry, customization lists, and you have all the different fields. So if I get a little bit technical here and I go to the entity fields, and I look for this annual revenue field, there's gonna be in a, a field that's in the customer uh, record here, um, it's gonna be called annual revenue. So if I do it, I sort it by description, I have, um, I should have an annual revenue field and maybe it's inactive now. Uh, but I should have a custom, uh, an annual revenue field somewhere in here. So if I have that field, and it, the, the, the safe search is gonna look at the, um, it's gonna look at the name of the field here, uh, but you always have the option of renaming fields in the specific form. So you have to know what field, if you rename the field only in that form, the field name that's going to show up on the custom search, on the safe search form or, or, or build criteria is going to be the, the field that you created originally, that name. So you have to just have some consistency and some order in the way you create and name fields. Um, the fourth, um, the fourth, question that we have is would like to see a demo on adding running total to a safe search. So this is a little this is where we get into a little bit advanced searching. So I already have a search um, created uh, for this and I'll show you what it looks like on the criteria. Um, I have it called running total. So I'm gonna click on edit and go to that search and so the way that you build a transaction search, which, which is what this would be, is that if I come to the new search that I showed at the beginning, you'll have to click on transaction. You'll have to come here and NetSuite has one safe search type for all transaction types that are standard in the system. So I started with clicking here and saying, I want a transaction search. I came to create safe, safe search, like I said before. Once I was here, then I, what I did is I said, well, show me all the transactions that are type invoice. You choose the type of transaction and this opens up and you select the, search, the transaction type that you wanna see. You can multi-select if you want by clicking control. If you wanna see different transaction types. In this case, I only wanna see invoices. And when you do transactions, you have to select whether you want, NetSuite calls it mainline, 
which is basically, do you wanna see header information or do you wanna see line level information? So for all transaction types that have detail in the lines like purchase orders, sales orders, invoices, you, if you wanna see the header only, you wanna select mainline is true. So when you do mainline, is you'll have to select mainline is true, yes or no. Uh, if you wanna see um, detail, you'll select no, meaning you wanna see line items and you may wanna see item record and amounts and quantities, et cetera. Um, couple of things when you're looking at transactions that there's also tax lines. So you wanna say tax line is, if you're doing detailed transaction lines, then you want, and you don't wanna see the taxes, you just wanna see items, you'll wanna say, Tax line is no. In this case, I'm looking at the header, so I'm not picking that. Once I do my criteria, I'll come to my results, and this is where it gets a little bit more complex. You'll say what, what you wanna see. So in this case, I wanna see the date of the invoice. I wanna see the name of the invoice of the customer. So I'm gonna rename it here, customer name. And I wanna see the amount of the invoice but I also wanna see that running total of that, you know, for that specific customer. So this is um, where SQL comes into play. So you create a field called formula. So there's different types of formula fields, currency, date, date time, uh, text and percent. Um, and you define your formula. So when you define the formula field, there's this formula field here and you open that field. This, this search is pretty, um, complicated. I, I, to be, I, I, I did a little bit of research to do this. This was a challenge. I, I had not done this before. So this is um, SQL, right? And basically this is the formula um, and I can, I can certainly uh, post, I'll post it on the, on the chat window uh, as an answer here. Um, in, in, in a second. Um, but um, you, you, this is a formula that you would select, right? And once this formula is created, I gave it a name, running total. I, I can add highlighting available filters or other things, and I just click save and run. And you'll see the search is showing me the, the information that I have, the date, the customer name, um, the, the amount of that invoice, and then the running total. So for example, for Shelbyson, I have two invoices. The first invoice 7988 and the second invoice 7988 that running total is 15976. So if I wanted to, for example, filter here and just show Shelbyson, I would do this, click out of that field, and it would show me all the invoices for Shelbyson and the running total for that customer. Um, if I just show everything, it's gonna show me all the invoices for every customer, but as a customer gets added to this report because it's sorted by date. Uh, the, the running total for that specific customer is gonna still be shown here uh, because the formula shows shown is it's running total by customer. If I just wanted a, a grand running total, I would edit that formula and make it a running total, not, not taking into account the customer. Um, Another, so the next question is more general uh, about, you know, learning about safe searches, um, showing some training, um, how to determine if a report is a safe search or a standard report. So standard reports and safe searches are very different. Uh, uh, you'll only be able to find safe search reports um, on the reports page. They will be here um, or in safe searches will be under safe searches here. And if you go to all safe searches, it's gonna show you all the safe searches. So this is where you can come in and see all the safe searches that are in the system. Um, <clears throat> one of the questions was about cleanup. Um, you can see here in this safe searches report, uh, you, can, you, can, so you can filter whether it's, um, you know, you wanna see private searches or all searches. And if you're an administrator, you have the option of seeing everything. Um, you can select searches that are available as any of these things. So if, if the search has that clicked, you can see it here. So if people have it as a dashboard view, it means they're using some sort of dashboard or if it's an email alert, et cetera. 
and you can filter by type. So this is the same type that you have at the beginning. So I will, if I want to see only transaction type searches, I would come here and select transaction. <clears throat> it's going to filter the searches as I have 309 transaction safe searches. Um, I can see whether they're private or public or shared, and I can see whether they're scheduled. So if they have an email alert, they're scheduled. And I'll talk about email alerts in a second. And here you can see uh, the name of the of the safe search. If it, if, if it was installed from a bundle, meaning from maybe a third party bundle that you have in your account needs a search to be able to run. So you definitely don't want to uh, delete that uh, or touch that probably. The ID of the search, this is the name. Uh, so this is where it becomes best practice to give it an, an ID, who the owner is or who created it. Um, and you can here see, you know, when it was last run and where it was last run by. So if you're doing a, a cleanup of your system, you can, you can uh, uh, sort by last run on. And you'll see here, for example, in this account, you know, there's a lot of safe searches that have not been run in a while. Right, so then you can clean those up by deleting those or by contacting the owner and seeing if they still need it and, and do, uh, do some cleanup there. So that would be a best practice to, to be able to clean safe searches. You can create a safe search of a safe search. Uh, so you can, you can, um, um, so, uh, so you can do that as well um, and, and, and get a little more granular on that but it will be the same, the same idea. Um, and you can have different views for this. So, so you can customize this view, sorry. Yeah, and you can, uh, you can add additional information to have you know, better, better information about your safe searches. Um, let's, let's go to um, a, a back to the safe search where we have the, the basic safe, safe search here. Um, and I'm going to quickly just look at this and see if I have any customers that are uh, from the United Kingdom. So I don't have any. Um, so I'm going to um, add the industry and I'm going to uh, search, switch this, and I'm gonna say, show me an industry, show me only customers where the industry is not empty and that would be none of none so if any of none is empty none of none will be not empty so i'm going to show that and i'm going to remove this uh, where the island revenue is empty for this example and i'm going to run it again and i'm going to get a list of the customers that have they have um, an industry and only those two that i updated before have an industry but what i want to show now is another uh, power of of the of the safe search which is um, highlighting so if i want to have if i have a search with multiple values more than two rows and and you want to highlight certain rows to so that they're more uh obvious to you uh one of the things you can do is on this their highlighting section here i can select a condition so i can i can come to condition and click on this uh arrow here and i can say show me where the industry is agriculture. So you select the condition, it's a simple condition, you can do it by value, by revenue, by sales rep, by any field that's available on the safe search. And again, you can use expressions so it can, you can make it a complex uh, uh, condition. So I'm just gonna say industry and, I'm, and, and, I'm gonna, and then it gives you options of what you want to do. You can add an image you know, uh, to that or you can highlight it. So I'm just gonna say, make it yellow, highlight it in yellow. So I added a, a very specific um, condition and a very specific rule highlighted in yellow. So now if I do save and run, you'll see that the, 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 in, the agriculture row is highlighted. You can do this for multiple conditions, multiple things, and, and, and that way you can highlight. So if I have this as a dashboard, so if I come here and I have this as a dashboard view, so I'm gonna click dashboard here. And you know, I wanna see this on my dashboard. Let's pretend that this is not by industry or maybe I'm the agriculture industry rep. Um, 
if I come to my, my dashboard and I want to add that, and this is another thing you can do with safe searches is that I can come here and I can personalize my dashboard and I can add a custom search. I can drag and drop custom search. I can close this. And within the custom search uh, portlet, I can select, I can set, I can do a setup and select that, uh, that search. So if I, if I selected that safe search as available to be a dashboard review, I can show it here. So I'm gonna say, this is a customer search. Uh, you can give it a, a, a portlet name. So uh, customers, define how many are, you know, uh, you wanna see and, and other, other uh, criteria. And I click save. And now the custom search appears in my dashboard and that gets highlighted. So another benefit of safe search is you can do that with reports, for example. Um, another uh, criteria, another thing you can do is, we talked about available filters, is that you can create emails. Um, so I can create emails, scheduled emails for safe searches uh, where I can send it, where I can say, well, every time a safe search gets created, a new customer gets created, send an email, and you, or you can do it based on a schedule. So summarize, so I can define, um, uh, for example, in my safe search, if I want to say, show me uh, the sales rep for this, I'm gonna put it here. I, I could define um, um, who the recipients are. For example, if I wanna send, send this to my manager every Monday morning, all the customers that we created yesterday, you can define that. Uh, or you can define it to the, to, to, uh, as a result. So if I wanna say, show it, send it to the sales rep. So based on results, if I have a sales rep here, um, I can create an email that is going to send it to the, um, to the, um, Sorry, here. Um, so I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it on a schedule. I'm going to do it immediately so you can see the result. Uh, I can send it to their sales rep, right? Uh, customized message. I can say um, new customer created uh, today. And I can define how to send it. So I'm going to send it within the message in this case. And if you define a schedule, this is where you would define the schedule. So I'm going to save and run this. And again, it's the, the results have not changed, but I'm going to, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new customer. I'm gonna select the agriculture uh, industry. I'm gonna select uh, sorry. I'm gonna select. Uh, I need to. I need to do one more thing here. I, I won't select. You know, um, Ed Sullivan as a sales rep, and I'm going to um, save this. Uh, subsidiary is the United States West. I'm gonna save this. There's no other mandatory fields, and what's gonna happen is that as soon as this gets created based on that safe search, Ed Sullivan is gonna receive an email that that, that, that uh, customer was created. If I go back to my safe search uh, and I refresh it, now, you know, um, it's not showing. So I didn't put the customer, I didn't put the country of the customer. So it's not showing because I don't have United States. So the, the search worked. Uh, if I select here and I come here and I select the United States as the customer of the, of the country of the customer, I can save this. And now when I come back to my search, I would expect that to be here. And it's also at Ed Sullivan. And the email was sent to Ed Sullivan to alert him that, the, that, that it was created. So hopefully that, that gives a little bit of more insight into safe searches. We have uh, 20 minutes left, so I'll go to the last of the, of the questions. Um, one question is very, a very good question was, uh, how to prevent staff from modifying existing safe searches? Um, so and that's a very good question. So whenever, that's a permissions issue. So there are, uh, um, 
there's a permission that allows you to run safe searches and there's a permission that allows you to save a safe search. Uh, obviously, if I am the owner, if I create in this safe search, if I have it public, well, I have it private, sorry, and I have it as, um, as something that somebody can see, I can check. So if I cl click here on Alex Smith, I can, I can allow them to edit the safe search. So this is how they will be able to do a save as, uh, sorry, save. If I have criteria just to, so that they can see it, but they cannot modify it, they will do a save as, if they have the permission. And the permission, uh, if I go to my user roles, and I'm just, I'm just gonna go to the role, to any role here. And if I go to the AR analyst, there's a permission under on the reports um, called, no, sorry, is under um, lists. Something is under lists. Perf there's, a, there's a permission called perform search to be able to run a search. And there's another permission called publish search. If the role that they have has the permission to publish a search, they will be able to do a save as. If they don't have that permission and they have the perform search, they can still run searches, but they cannot save them, uh, either by creating a new one or save you know, uh, as an audience. So that's the way you would control users from creating a safe search. Um, I've always said that safe searches are a very powerful tool but if not controlled, they can get out of hand and you can end up with thousands of searches, which makes it very hard to do safe search cleanup. Uh, that is an offer, a service we offer where we come help you and do safe search cleanup. But like I mentioned before, it's just a matter of coming to the safe search report and looking at you know who's run it, when they've run it and, and doing cleanup from there. Um, next question was, which field categories are most commonly used versus which are specialized for unique circumstances? Is there a fast method to determine which field type to use when exploring detailed lists? Really, the, the I mean, every field is available for a safe search. Um, so it depends on what you're looking to build. Uh, the safe searches are an instrument of extracting information out of NetSuite for you. So it really depends on what you want to export that will determine you know, what fields are useful or not. But again, all fields, all fields are, are, are useful. Um, one thing about useful fields that I'll uh, um, try to show here is if I want to, um, so let's say I'm creating a transaction search um, and I'm gonna quickly create a, sorry, under searches, new search. income to transaction search. And I wanna create a search of, say, of, of sales orders. So I'm gonna give it a name. This field is limited, so you have to be careful what name you give it. Uh, and I'm gonna say, I wanna look at a type and I wanna look at, uh, I'm gonna call it sales orders, but I'm also gonna add estimates. So I have sales order here and I also wanna see estimates. So I'm gonna call it sales orders and estimates. Make, make it public. I wanna see the main line be false. So I'm gonna see the items, just to do something different. And I'm gonna to come to um, my results and I'm going to remove everything and start from scratch. And I'm gonna just put date. I wanna see the date. I wanna see the type. So is it a sell order or an estimate? I wanna see the name. So I put NA and it takes, you, takes me a name. That's gonna be the customer name. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put customer name. Um, and then I'm going to, um, there's a couple of things that I, that I don't have in the sales order, right? So is it, 
it is it, what status is that customer in? So if it's a sales order, it's probably a customer, but if it's a quote, maybe a prospect that they never bought for me. So what I wanna do is I wanna join the customer record. So the way you do joins is that you, in the list fields, in the list of fields, if you scroll all the way down, you're gonna see some, you're gonna see some fields that have a dot, dot, dot. Uh, and that just means that it's fields of, that are related to other records that are part of that specific record. So in the estimate or sales order, there's always a customer attached to that. So all the fields related to the customer are in the customer dot, dot, dot. So I'm gonna here to customer, uh, mainline fields dot, dot, dot. And, and it shows you all the fields related to that specific, to, to customers. So in that field, I wanna add um, customer um, status, st stage. Stage is the field in, in CRM that shows you where they are, right? Uh, and I, then I also wanna add, because I'm in, in the detail search, I wanna add the item. So what item am I quoting them? I wanna add the uh, rate. Um, or it's going to be called item rate. So this is where it gets a little bit tricky, item rate. And I want to add the amount. Uh, and I also want to add the quantity. Quantity that I'm selling them in this specific transaction. So I've added the fields uh, and then I do, I mean, I can add highlights, I can add filters. Um, so if I want to do this by, you know, country, uh, I would come here and say, show me again from the customer fields, customer mainline fields, show me country. Um, country here, no, no, that's not what I wanted. So I'm gonna come back, customer fields. I'm gonna add country here, and I'm gonna show it as a filter. So about what I want to do, I'm gonna do save and run. And in this search, um, it's gonna show me, you know, the date, the transaction type, the customer name. Uh, again, this is where I forgot to add the taxable line. So I'll, I'll go back into that, the stage, the item, the quantity, the rate, and the total amount, right? So this rate, this stage, is what's showing me whether they're a customer or a prospect. So if I were to filter by this, I may have um, some, that, some that are prospect. I may not have prospects in this account. Um, I don't, but it shows me what stage they're in. So that's how you link a field. And this is where I'm going to say tax line is false. And if I save and run that again, the tax line uh, that I had it before will disappear. So this is sort of an example of how to join fields from other records. One of the questions was, can you combine safe searches into one safe search? You can't do that in a safe search itself. Uh, you can build what's called suitlets. And suitlets are customized, screens, uh, for lack of a better term, built using script where you can combine criteria from multiple searches to show information in a tabular fashion like this. Uh, but those do require uh, a developer or somebody with developer skills because it is a um, scripted, it's not done through the UI. Um, the, the analytics workbooks, which will have a, a, a session on that, two weeks from today um, has been NetSuite's response to be able to do multi-join searches because in the safe search, you can only do one join. You can go from sales order to customer, but you cannot go from sales order to customer to something else. Uh, there's a limitation on how many joins you can have. In this case, I had one join, so but but I cannot go further than that with safe searches, but with with uh, the Sweet Analytics Workbook feature, feature you can have uh, multiple joints. Uh, and again, we'll have a session on that in a couple of weeks. Um, see what else I can show you here. Um, 
The last thing I wanna show you is how to do, um, uh, we have 10 minutes and I'll leave five minutes for questions if there are any, uh, how to do a, um, a total. So I'm gonna use the same search and I'm going to uh, do a, a, what's called a, a summary uh, save search. So I, here I'm showing you details of everything that is um, in that specific report. But say I only wanted to do a count of how many items I've sold the customers, right? Uh, or I have per transaction type. So what I would do here is I would say, based using the same values, I would say group by type, group by uh, customer, and then I wanna see how many items, how many items, so a count of items, and then the sum of the amount. So what this is gonna show me is it's gonna sh show me how many per estimate or sales order and per customer, how many items have I quoted or sold them in the sales order and how many, and what's the total of that? Uh, if I wanted to do a, an average, um, then I could do, for example, something like a formula currency, where I'm going to do an average of, um, and, I, and here I can come into the formula um, and I can say, this is not gonna be a perfect formula, but I can say amount, I can choose the amount field over and do a, just a simple divide the quantity field. And it's gonna give me an average of that, right? Um, so I do save and run. And you see that the save search changed where now I have only, I don't have the date, I don't have the detail of the item name. I just have the transaction type, the customer name, how many items um, selling, uh, I've, I've sold them, how much, and then an average for an average formula that I have here. And again, I can sort this by by customer, and I, it, it will show me, you know, by in order of customer. And if I drill down, if I click on any of the fields that have a link, if I drill down to that, then it's going to show me the detail that we saw before. So for this customer, Camino Foundation, um, it shows me everything that I have in the original safe search. Uh, with all the details so I can see that. One thing I, don't, I did not add here that I may wanna add, for example, is I may wanna add a, a total, not a running total, but a bottom total. So in my results, I can say show totals here. Um, and I wanna change my, my, my sorting to do it by, by customer. So I'm gonna s s change that. Again, it's gonna show me a total at the bottom. Uh, of, of all the sales for that period or that search. And if I click on Camilo Foundation, it's gonna uh, show me the, um, the running totals down here. Some totals don't make sense. Item rate, you know, there's no total there, but it, it totals everything. So you have to be you know, mindful of what totals make sense and what totals don't make sense. You can't do a total in some lines and, and not total in some other lines. Um, the, um, the last one that I want to show is uh, if I want to do a, a, um, a total, a number to do a reminder. So I'm going to create a search and set it as a reminder. And all I want to show here, when you do a reminder, you basically remove every field um, and you say um, the, the type. So I'm going to say type. Um, and I'm gonna change my criteria when I'm only looking at estimates, or sorry, sales orders. I'm gonna remove the, the estimates, and then my criteria or my results, I'm gonna say type, and I'm gonna say count. So I'm only showing how many sales orders do I have. So, and but because I want this as a reminder. So it's not a search that is gonna be very meaningful, meaning because you only have, you know, uh, sorry, and this is, I, I did something wrong. So I wanna know how many total sales orders I have. So I wouldn't do a count of type because there's only one type, sales order, type one. I wanna look at the at what's unique in that sales order and that's gonna be the internal ID. So when you wanna do a count of something, of a, of a transaction, you wanna do internal ID. So you'll see here, um, um, 
that when I do it, it's going to tell me that I have 214 sales orders. So this this by itself doesn't tell me anything. But if I want to, because I created it as a dashboard, if I reminder, if I come to my reminders and I set up a reminder, I'm going to, if I look at the custom reminders and I go down to office hours to the O, there's going to be office hours, sales orders, and estimates total. And I can add it here. I can drag and drop it to the top. And I click save, and it's going to show me that I have 214 sales orders. So that's very useful when you want to have a reminder of, for example, you know, any, you can do, there's a lot of new reminders, like new customers added to yesterday, or but let's say you want to do a reminder of how many sales orders were created in the system yesterday. You can create a safe search that has a, a criteria update created the day before. It's dynamic, so it's not a hard coded to yesterday, but yesterday is always going to be a dynamic search and do what I just did with the internal ID count, and it's going to show you this. And if I want to click, um, um, and then if I click here, it's, it, I, I could I could build it where then I can have the detail of the sales orders that were created. That's not the way I have it right now, but I could I could do it so I can um, have that detail. So um, it's 1.56, we have four more minutes. Uh, there, there aren't, I don't know if there's any last minute questions, anything that you'd like me to touch out uh, on that I haven't. Uh, but if if not, this is the end of the, the sort of prepare presentation and answer to the questions that we received. If I did not answer your question, please uh, let me know in the in the question and answer window. And I'll make sure that um, um, answer. So uh, there's a question that's called, want to confirm you can stop people from creating new searches? Yes. If you remove the publish search permission from the role, they would, should not be able to create a new safe search. Uh, they can run searches, ad, ad hoc searches, but they will not be able to save them. Uh, if you remove the perform search permission as well, they will not be able to either search or save searches. Um, when you create a safe search, the next question is, can any way searches from being public by the default? When you, I believe that the behavior, when you create a new search, I'll, I'll see here. Um, I think the behavior is that they're not public by default. You have to make them public. I'll confirm that in the settings. I'll send an email to the person that published the question but I'm pretty sure that they're, they're, they're private by default. You have to make them public. One, one last thing for everybody. Uh, there was a question about training. So uh, for you, for everybody out there, search, um, Sweet Answers is always a good uh, guide. There's a lot of very specific use cases of of searches that have been built by other customers or by NetSuite that, uh, or other partners that have been published to Sweet Answers. So I, I encourage you to use that, uh, to not reinvent the wheel. They don't exist as created, but they give you all the criteria and the, sometimes even the SQL coding to create that. Um, so look into that. And the other things, uh, if, if you want more, more, um, more uh, detailed training, NetSuite does sell a learning pass um, uh, that you can um, you can purchase. There's a current promotion right now um, for three months at, at a discounted price, where you can you can uh, create you can run and there's there's a Sweet Analytics um, Sweet Analytics um, by product. Sorry, uh, here Sweet um, Analytics. Yeah. There is a, a way to, there's a few safe searches classes that are pre-recorded on-demand classes that you can, that you can uh, uh, purchase if you want more sort of advanced knowledge of that. But I encourage you to use say, uh, Sweet Answers. There's a lot of information there. Well, uh, 
thank you everybody for your participation today. I uh, hope this was useful. We are still um, def defining the topic for next week. So if you have any um, any uh, interest in anything in particular, please uh, send us some suggestions. Uh, we're very flexible. Uh, two weeks from today, we're gonna talk about Sweet Analytics Workbook, uh, but we're still defining next week. Again, thank you for your participation and I am going to uh, stop the webinar now. Mm -hmm.